But anyway, the article is Boeing is flight testing Red 6 augmented reality dogfight training system, uh, which I, I don't know why they're calling it dogfight. Boeing has begun flight testing augmented reality system with, that the airframer hopes to incorporate into the T-7 Red Hawk. The system known as the Advanced Tactical Augmented Reality System, ATARS, is produced by aerospace startup Red 6. Technology concept aims to visually project imaginary aggressor aircraft onto a pilot's helmet visor, allowing them to train on air combat maneuvers. That's very European. Uh, at the 2023 Air Cyberspace Conference, both Boeing and Red 6 revealed they have integrated ATARS into a A4. We were just talked about that. Skyhawk begun testing. Successful series of ground tests and four flight sorties illustrate our collaborative ability to rapidly integrate, develop, and test new technology. Yates is a former Boeing F-15 pilot, thinks the ATAR technology has potential to change fighter pilot training to for an entire generation. He made the case for augmented reality's potential value to flight training at the Paris Air Show. I can take something that's out there on my radar scope as it translates all the way to inside of 15 miles and now it comes off my radar scope and I see it visually. Describing how Boeing plans to integrate into the T-7's cockpit. It was founded by uh, Raptor pilot Dan Robinson, who flew for the Air Force and the Royal Air Force. We remain focused on delivering a fully synthetic outdoor training environment. Combination of T-7 and ATARs will usher in a new training, new paradigm for training. Uh, so there you go. Gonky, what are your thoughts on this? I think BVR... It, it, beyond it, visual range you got it the acronyms man sounds people don't beyond, i think beyond visual range in the training commands i think they actually looked at this the navy did with t45s and they said nah, no thanks um but i do see some value bvr beyond visual range in in the uh in like an airplane like t7 the the, the, the uh, t45 but the within visual stuff being shown on your visor and stuff i think it's garbage I would wonder about refresh rates and lag time. If you're if you're talking anything like high update rates, because nothing's faster than the human eyeball. And so, you know, I mean, you've seen lag time. I mean, people know about lag on video games and right. stuff like that. If you don't have every system synced up, you know, you might be fighting something that, you know, you thought was there and right. is not, even though it's all virtual you're losing it. I like right. what they're saying about um, it's a good idea in, in beyond visual range stuff because it gives you a, a good threat repl repl replication or representation without you having to send up right. 12, 20 airplanes, right? Because, <laughs> you know, think about the complications. We use the T-38A, and I cannot talk today. We use it, that's because we're doing this at noon. We use the T-38A because it was cheap, right? They called it budget dust. That's what they always said when they talked about us and they gave us no respect as a result. So we were out there producing eight, 10, whatever jets, plus ATAC, plus Draken, plus whoever else wanted to play. Plus they would augment. Sometimes they would put, you know, red Raptors and red F-35s and whatever out there. And that gave them enough bandits. That's complicated. Right. We had to organize our forces. We had to, everybody had to, you know, weather all that stuff. Imagine a world where you only need to put up a four ship of your flight, your guys, you know, your four ship of F 22s, your four ship F 16s or whatever. And as long as every jet is talking to each other, so you're all seeing the same picture, you only need, you know, the host aircraft, whether it's one or two or, or zero downrange to run all this. Everything else is just your red blip on the screen. And when you get closer, you can see it visually because it's projected in your helmet. That's about as far as part cast training as you get, which I think gives you the ability to get bigger pictures without having a mass of forces. Well, I mean, yeah, I get that. But the problem is that's where all your experience is made. Okay. So like, if you want to use this tool as an introduction tool, uh, I think it's good. But, you know, when it comes time to actually hammer down on real life, so like, I mean, it's removing the human aspect out of it. Well, guess what? War is fought with humans as of now, maybe in the future they're mm -hmm. not, but you know, there's, there's a lot of airmanship, decision-making, thinking, fly, like flying skill that goes into just getting to the area 
flying tactically within certain limitations, picking up, I mean, every day, right? The visuals are different based on sun angle, the clouds. I mean, the, there's so many things that like, some days I can pick up a tally at almost 20 miles. Some days they can be like three feet from my windscreen. I cannot see them, right? Cons. Yeah. Contrails. Contrails too. Yeah, exactly. So there are so many variables out there, uh, not only in the tactical environment, but in the administrative phases of flight, you know, just, just getting the, the, even, even the whole briefing part of it. Right. I mean, as much as we hate to sit there and listen to words, the, 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 the deconfliction and the, oh, yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? There's so much there that, uh, that they're trying to bypass. And I think that's fine early on as a stepping stone, but I think like fleet level, you can you can't replace the real thing, man. I mean, you can get close, but I don't think you re- can replace it. So, you know, in my mind, how close can you get? Like before, you know, you know, what's the rate of return? Basically, is is the flight hour so crazy expensive? It's not worth that extra little bit. But in my mind, in war, you want you want you know every bit of advantage you can get. So don't skimp because it might be the difference between winning and losing in the future. But that's just, I mean, that's my, that is a good point because, uh, you know, I think some of the best training that I've gotten, uh, non-traditionally, you know, I think cross countries are one of them. You know, I look back at cross countries and think, man, that's, that's where I got a lot of good airmanship being alone and unafraid and got to explore the systems in a non-tactical environment. But also when you were red air, so <clears throat> we spent a large chunk of our careers as, as professional red air where, you know, that's all we do. We know the tactics, we know the threats, we go out there, we replicate whatever we need to. But in the fleet or in your operational squadron, red air is kind of a, hey, this is going to be an easy day kind of thing because you've got a 4V whatever, you know, four F-16s, I'll say in this example, versus, you know, whoever, 12 or, or whatever. And so... As the blue guy, dude, you are in the books, you're studying, you know, this is a big deal. It's usually an upgrade, right? Or something like that. But as a red guy, you open the book, you go, this is what we're doing today. I'll see it step. It's a very easy, quick thing because it's not our focus. But I will tell you, as the red guy, where you're not cuffed by the debrief anymore, you are now learning a lot because you're seeing both sides of the picture because you're seeing, hey, I know what he's supposed to be doing. I know what I'm doing. So I know the answer. It's like you're quizzing your buddy. I know what's happening. I know what he's supposed to do. I know what we're actually doing. And I know what SA they have. And they didn't do what they were supposed to, or they did it. And so me, as an observer, I'm learning a ton. Even though I'm not manipulating, I'm still using the radar. I'm still doing all these things. So I agree with you in that even when you're not directly training, there's value in just putting a jet in the air and doing it. Dude, so like my, like the perfect example, I talked about it earlier. I spent 10 years studying the MiG-29 and the flanker. Yep. You know, I yep. played them in video games, even, you know, back then, <laughs> 12, 15 years ago. <laughs> I, I will tell you the first time I merged with a real MiG-29, the first time I merged with a real flanker, it's different. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I can't. The you shock know? factor, just the shock factor. I mean, the first time you see, I mean, the first time I saw a Raptor, you're like, yeah, you know, I mean, it gives you that yeah. little bit of a adrenaline. Exactly. Now. exactly. And same thing like uh, any naval aviator will, will tell you, you know, the, the, the first time you go to the boat, cause they're, you know, we, we practice it in the sim, we practice it in the field, yeah. but when we go to an actual boat, it is, dude, it's different. And yeah. you just can't. You know, you, you can't, uh, you can't replicate at least we can't now, at least with the technology we have now, I don't know, you know, red six, I mean, those, like mover said, we know at least one of the guys there and he's just super smart. Uh, I don't know the level of technology that they're, they're using, but I seriously doubt it can take the place of actual experiences. I think it's fantastic for initial training to kind of get your head wrapped around. Oh, this is what a lot of airplanes look like, you know, uh, beyond visual range, right. but. But dude, there's a, so as with everything else, unintended consequences, right? So sometimes you get stuff out of stuff you never intended. And by that, I mean, all this is trons. The jets have to talk to each other. 
in order for the picture to make sense. The Jets have to talk to the visor. So is there now a way that you can tron this and making the enemy think something that it's not? Like, you know, can you de- develop this technology into something more advanced as you go to where it's not a training tool, it's an offensive or defensive weapon? So, yeah, you know, I, I, I love the development of it. You know, I, I do think that there's a lot of value in what they're doing. And I agree with you that there's, at the, there's no replacement for reps. Uh, and one of the things <clears throat> we always liked, I liked, uh, which we didn't have a whole lot of access to when I was down at Homestead was four ship linked simulators. Because right. what you, I agree with you, you know, hey, nothing beats the, you know, the APU start and all that stuff that you have to do to get to the airspace. And then that airmanship of staying in the airspace and all that stuff, because you're gonna have to deal with that. But for just pure repetition, getting in a simulator where they start you out in the, in the cap in the, yeah. the combat air patrol, uh, in the orbit and your jets are already loaded. The enemies are already downrange. You're already connected to your other three buddies in the sim and you're just practicing, uh, you know, Going down tactics. range, doing your tactics, coming yep. back, picture clean. Just reset yep. the sim. Repetitions like that are great for muscle memory. Oh yeah, we we did tons of that in the navy yeah. at the at the rag. To link all four linked up. I mean, you're right. Yeah. It's super valuable, man. Because guess yeah. what? Too if if things go sideways, you go, hey, pause it, and he stops. Well, and also <laughs> too, as opposed to in the air, where sometimes we have to come back to the debrief to assess. Your sim turns red. When you yeah. die, you know, <laughs> you get dead. the red sim and you're like, why is it, why, what's, it's not moving. What, what's yeah. going on? You know, it, it gives you that immediate feedback of, okay, I don't want to do that. Okay, that's, and the sim weapons replicate exact, you're not looking at tables or all that stuff, trying right. to remember. It's like, it's dude, he man. shot me at this range yeah. at this time and I died or I shot him and he died or whatever the case may be. So I, I do think there's a, a mix of both. What I think Red 6 is trying to do is trying to take the value of repetitions that we get from the simulator and putting them in the air. Yeah. And which I think is great for training. It just, yeah. It just depends on how it, it, it like everything else, man, it, it's going to depend. Yeah. I don't yeah. know for, for, you know, calf guys, right. This is what's saying the air force or fleet guys in the Navy. I think you cannot beat real people in red air machines. I know it's more expensive, but I mean, if you, if you want the absolute best, that's what you're going to have to do. I mean, at the end of the day, but I know it's expensive. I'm not, I don't argue that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We I were the know. cheapest. We were the cheapest mover. They got rid of us. <laughs> not only did they get rid of us, but they, never mind. <laughs> um, uh, moving on. 